Hi everyone, let's talk about the infinite descent technique for solving Diophantine equations. What we're going to be doing is exploiting the well ordering principle. And if you haven't seen it before, well, I'll show you an example in terms of the situation that we're in, in, in using infinite descent. So we're going to let P1, P2, P3, and so on, be a sequence of statements. And presumably they're, they're related in some way, but they don't have to be. What we want to show is that the set of PI such that I is a positive integer and PI is true is empty. In other words, all PI are false. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the well ordering principle to do it. So we're going to assume for contradiction that this set S is non-empty. So what that what that allows us to do is um, use the well ordering principle to get a minimal element, minimal PK that is true. So out of out of P1, P2, P3, and so on, there's a minimal PK that is true. The well ordering principle tells us that. So what happens then in this technique is that if, if we can do it, we have to find pj true, assuming pk is true, and j is less than k. And that, that contradicts the minimality of k. So that's what we're going to do. And I think that's that's enough um, general theory. I'll give you a concrete example now. So for the concrete example we have the Diophantine equation x cubed is equal to 3y cubed plus 9z cubed. So here's how we're gonna solve it. We're gonna we're gonna assume that x, y, z is a non-zero solution. Okay, so right right from the get-go we can see that 3 divides both sides so 3 divides x so we'll let x equal to 3x naught. What that then tells us is that <coughs> by substitution 27 x cubed x naught cubed is equal to 3 y cubed plus 9 z cubed and now we divide out to get 9 x naught cubed is equal to y cubed plus 3 z cubed. Now, now we can tell that 3 divides this and this so 3 also has to divide y so y is equal to 3 y naught, which implies that 9 x naught cubed is equal to 27 y naught cubed plus 3 z cubed. And we can divide out by 3 again to get 3 x naught cubed is equal to uh, 9 y naught cubed plus z cubed. And so since 3 divides this and 3 divides this, 3 also has to divide z. So with z is then equal to 3z naught, which then tells us that 3x naught cubed is equal to 9y naught cubed plus 27z naught cubed. And that then tells us that x naught cubed is equal to 3y naught cubed plus 9z naught cubed. And notice that the original equation and this final equation have the same form. 
they have the same form, so x naught, y naught, z naught is also a solution. But notice that x naught, y naught, z naught is equal to x over 3, y over 3, z over 3. And since we assumed that z is not 0, um, and we can assume with a loss of generality that z is positive, we find a smaller z that works. In fact, we find a smaller x that works and a smaller y that works as well. So this is strictly less than x, y, z in some sense. You, you, can, you can formalize this by choosing one of the variables. And so that means that there is some solution that is smaller than the original minimal solution. And this is not all zeros either because then this would be all zeros. So that's the contradiction that we wanted. And there is a second way of looking at this, which is that you find instead of instead of using the well ordering principle, you can use induction to get pi1 for is any solution, and you get that this is true, and you get pi2 is also true, and you get pi3 is true. And you get an infinite sequence of solutions that that are decreasing because I1 is greater than I2 is greater than I3 and so on. So uh, that's also impossible because they're all greater than zero. So you can't have an infinite sequence of decreasing solutions like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.